everyone and welcome to Def Talk, the talk show that focuses on everything World of Warcraft, whether it's classic, retail, the players that play it. I'm your host, Def Camp. We have with us my wonderful, lovely, hairless brother, Melderon. How you doing, Melderon? How would you know I'm hairless and wearing a hat? Hey everyone, how's it going? It's it's not that big of a secret, so uh yeah. And our very special guest today, the one and only the music master of <laughs> basically everything, Chimley. How you doing, Chim? What's going on, man? Good, thanks. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me again. Uh, it's good to be back with you. Uh, dude, well, if you guys aren't aware, we had a, a little, uh, um, what's the word when we do, a collaboration. I said mm-hmm. collaboration with Chimley a few days ago, and it was why World of Warcraft Classic music, and we delved into the music of Classic. Uh, Chimley himself is a professional uh, music music player, and he he does uh, a lot of he knows a lot about music. Let's let's just say <laughs> that I know a little bit about music. Chimley knows a lot about music. He spent his life pretty much studying music. And if you guys haven't uh, seen his channel, uh, it's YouTube slash slash Chimley. He has some amazing amazing uh, what he calls scorecraft, which delves into the music of classic WoW in particular, and really lets you hear the music kind of in a whole new perspective. And it's just amazing work. Um, Chimley, I'm really, really, really pleased to have you on a deaf talk today. So let's just start off. When did you start for, when did you get introduced to WoW and how were you introduced to WoW? So I remember it was in the beginning of high school. So in the UK, that's like 11, 12 ish. Um, I used to be a RuneScape player and just as a side note, I just started playing old school RuneScape again, and it's nice. great. Uh, but yeah, I was I used to play RuneScape as a kid, and then I went around to my friend's house, and he had an older brother, and they had this attic in in the top of their house that was just this gaming temple. You know, I, I had nothing like this; it was amazing. And so they had you know one computer there, one next to it, and there was there were brothers playing the game together. It was I didn't have a brother; I always wanted one, so I was just enamored of it. Um, and so I I was used to RuneScape. You know how it looks; it's very potato mode. Yeah, uh, you know. Delightful though that is, and <laughs> I remember seeing my friend and his brother. He, his brother was a Tauren warrior. I distinctly remember it. Uh, and he was playing in Elven Forest. My friend, um, uh, like some sort of mage or something like that. And I was just blown away because I'd never seen anything like that at the time. Mm. I, I played a lot of RTS games and RuneScape, and that was about it. So seeing something like that, where it's a proper RPG and you're in yeah. a world, and the graphics are amazing for the time. And I thought, what, are these real people? Is this like RuneScape on steroids? What is it? <laughs> Basically, uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I could not believe it. I was just like instantly hooked. Um, so I made my own character there. It was a human mage, I think. And yeah, I got like the Fargo Deep Mind, did all of that, then went home and instantly like the withdrawal, it was strong, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I just RuneScape wasn't kind of for you anymore, huh? No, 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 yeah. I couldn't do it anymore. So yeah. eventually I begged my parents enough to get me... Uh, I, I don't know how long, it must have taken me a while because we didn't have much money as a kid. So mm-hmm. the whole like, oh, it's a subscription thing. Hmm, maybe not. Uh, <laughs> I think I begged enough and pleaded with them that eventually they they let me get it. And I made a, an elf, a night elf druid uh, called Elfin Master. And I got that guy to level 12. I never played him again, but I've kept him around just you know, <laughs> for nostalgia's and sake. This was uh, in vanilla, correct? I think so, but this is like so far ago and I've not got the greatest memory for, you know, where I've left my keys and stuff right. like that. You know, I can remember weird data and stuff like that, but I don't know, I, I don't know if you guys are similar. I just can't remember anything about my past. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> it's very... This camp has some very memory. fragmented memories. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, there's a different reason for that, but we'll just uh, skip over that and talk about that. Uh, anyway, so... International man of mystery. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so well, you uh, you played your druid uh, first, and then what did you do after that? Oh, God, I made my main because I I was basically an alcoholic. Uh, but my main character nice. I made was a dwarf hunter called Hunterbeard because Ooh. you know obviously that's just what else are you gonna call it, right? Hunterbeard. <laughs> yeah, and I eventually got into like level forty or something by the time Wrath of the Lich King came out. But yeah, I think I started at the very very beginning of BC. Because I have like this faint memory of my my friend's brother like being super hyped about BC, and he sort of hated us. He was like, he was like this sort of you know 
quite a few years older brother and we were like little kids and he would always just like bully us a little bit and I always wanted him to like me and he never really did yeah so I kind of looked up to him and I remember him talking about like the release and going through the dark portal and it just sounded crazy to me nice um, but oh, I so guess so that you probably played like at the end of vanilla into uh, BC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it still feels like vanilla anyway because I didn't get to outline right. for years. You know. Okay, so you possible. were you were uh, <laughs> yeah you were a very alcoholic. But that did yeah. did playing um, RuneScape and being in an MMO help you at all? In, in kind of um, in WoW, did it give you a head a head start at all? Yeah, maybe, but they're such different games. I yeah. actually maybe even prefer the quests in RuneScape, and I've I've always thought that they're like it's almost like a point and click adventure. Yeah. Um, whereas WoW, it's got a very different style of quest. You know, you yeah. just have to collect bear asses all day long or something like that. Um, so yeah, I I don't know how much it helped me, other than sort of being used to that RPG thing, and then this is just a next level version of that. So yeah, you know, for me, like when I see RuneScape, I've only really uh, never really played it that much. But when I look at it and I see it, it seems more like a game where you're kind of watching from the outside. You're kind of like moving pieces, and you know, mm-hmm. you're there, but you're. And a lot has to do with that downward-looking uh, yeah. style of you know. But when you play WoW and you feel like you're really immersed inside the world. Totally. You know, it's it's a totally different feeling, and I think you know we can start talking about the art of WoW and how that really immerses you because you know, RuneScape was a very like you said it was limited in its in its technology. They mm. they didn't have very uh, wasn't visually a very stunning game, um, but it was the gameplay that kind of got you captured, and then yeah. you know the the, uh, the the growth of your character, which really um, and the social mm. uh, experience as well, but. Yeah. What WoW did is it kind of gave you the social experience, the gameplay, but also the visual and audio. Mm. Of, but before we get into like the art itself, I wanted to ask Jim, like, were you at this point in your life, were you studying music, or is this something that happened later? Oh no, 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 no. Uh, so <laughs> I actually I tried to join my infant school choir when I was like five or six years old, and I was told I was tone deaf and couldn't sing. So I like I didn't. <laughs> oh my that. god. Yeah, I know, I know. So. Then, Did you ever go back to that teacher and just and like throw her a? Well, my mom works in that school now, so oh, nice. yeah, they 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 know about that having happened, and I'm mortified. Uh, but so I I was like forced into my junior school choir, so you're like ten, eleven for our leaving thing before you, we would go to high school, which I guess I don't know what you do in America. It's like middle school when you're eleven, or is it that depends yeah, where you, you live. Go to it depends school. where you live. So oh, in okay. in like we're we're from a large city, so we don't have middle school. But go ahead, sorry. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Before going to high school, like 11 or something, um, we had like this end of year big concert and everyone was forced to be in the choir and I couldn't stand the idea. But the guy that ran that, um, he said, hey, you're good. I'm going to give you a solo. I'm going to like push you a bit. And then from that, I just got the bug basically. And mm. uh, I joined my high school choir when I was like, in, you know, the first day or second day of a high school. And that was sort of my hiding place because I got bullied quite a lot in school. So I sort of fled to the music room and from that it sort of gave me this chance to think oh wow this is amazing this is where i feel safe and but i didn't really start properly getting into and having lessons until i was like 14 or 15. so and this age like was you... this, so what age did you start playing well i'm just trying to put it all together if there's a connection i think it's about 12 or 13 <laughs> okay something like that yeah so did you have an appreciation for the uh music and wow before you started oh, yeah. playing? are you so you already were kind of um you know amazed by the music and, and everything and i think i've been like that since pokemon blue dude seriously okay like, yeah <laughs> it's just like oh i've always been just humming along to them and you know the individual lines following them it i guess i've always been thinking along those lines but now it's like right. oh now i actually get it like okay right i'm sure as your knowledge of music grew your pre your appreciation grew as well right yeah I mean, it's, yeah it's one of those things where you actually start to understand what was going on in the minds of those developers and and you mm-hmm. kind of really mm-hmm. appreciate, you know, what they did. So, so, okay. So you started playing WoW, then you start going, uh, you know, into your music uh, school and, and learning your music. And uh, so when was the point really where you were like, um, you know, hooked on the game you were playing, were, were you ever like playing every day or were you just. When I, what, was I not doing that ever? Uh... Uh, so you were, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I did quit once though, or, you know, maybe a couple of times, like for a small period, but, um, I remember 
the release of Cataclysm, I was like 16 or 17 or something then. And I was just on a high from doing my first ever real raiding in Wrath of the Lich King in Ice Crown with a group guild of friends. And then we went to college and then, which is like 16, 17 or something. And Cataclysm came out and suddenly my paladin didn't work the same. You know, I had this holy power nonsense. Like, what the hell is this? And then my druid had like this, you know, daylight and moon thing, you know, you know, the, the sun and moon stuff that I For just was like, Whoa. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. This, is, this is different. Uh, I don't like it. What's going on here? Um, so I did actually manage to get to the level cap of Kata, but then when Mr. Pandaria came out, I was like, all right, well, I guess I'm not playing this, um, <laughs> which in hindsight I'm sad about because apparently it was great and playing through the content now, it's actually, it was pretty good. But, yeah, it wasn't bad. It, it, yeah. I mean, there were there were parts of it that were good. There were parts of it that, that I didn't really like, but, you know. It was definitely my, like, refuge in a, you know, high school is tough for everyone. So, like, yeah. hiding in Azeroth was, yeah. yeah. And going back to what you were saying about, you know, going from RuneScape, which is kind of, you know, top down, all of the quest text is sort of jokes and you very much feel like you're in a game. And then you go mm-hmm. to World of Warcraft where it's a world that you go yeah. to, like a, like a metaphysical place that everyone kind of journeys to that is almost as real as anywhere else and like it's as real as america is to me it's more real yeah. you know america is this like fictional place i've heard about on tv <laughs> i've got no proof it's real it might just be a, a massive conspiracy you know? well I, but... <laughs> I think it's i think it's real i mean what do you think Laura? i think it's i think it's pretty real yeah uh that's debatable <laughs> <laughs> but you know um, what i mean like yeah you've got all of this i could draw you a map of everywhere in stormwind you know it's it's in yeah. your head it's a yeah. real place somehow and all of the music and the art style and the game itself it it drew you into it as though it was real. That's something that the developers did so well with the music. I mean, they really put together, you know, you talk about Stormwind, right? Mm. Put the music together with the scenery, with the characters, with everything. It's in how they created that one city and how they did that with each zone. I, I, I really feel like there was never a game that kind of like, when you were in Stormwind, the music felt like Stormwind. Mm-hmm. I know Meldron says a lot. The first time he walked into Ogremar and he heard those drums going and yeah. like he got this chill. You know, you can talk about that, Meldron, but they they so well encapsulated everything, you know, that had to do with each zone you were in, uh, with the scenery and the music. They all went together so well and so perfectly. And I feel like mm-hmm. not many games have done that in that way. With with wow. and they did it with almost like every zone, and that's the amazing thing, you know. Yeah, so I got I got a quest to go. My first character was an undead uh, warrior, and I got a quest to take the mm-hmm. zeppelin, and I had someone helping me. Thank God, Dan, my buddy Dan, who we've t- hopefully one day we'll <laughs> yeah. have on Def Talk, but yeah. maybe maybe not. We'll see. He's kind of yeah, a loose cannon, that? but but anyway. So he, he's like, hey, you know, go in the. Ze-. I was like, well, how do I get to Orgamar? He's like, go in the zeppelin. I'll show you where it is. Blah blah. blah. So I, I went over the, across the, sea, the Great Sea, and I get off the Zeppelin, and I walk that little road from the Zeppelin Tower to the front gates of Orgrimmar. Mm-hmm. I remember walking through the windy little road there to get in, and as soon as you walk in, the drums hit, mm-hmm. and it's it's an epic feeling, but then you're yeah. meted by an epic visual, because you walk in, mm-hmm. and there's a hundreds, a hundreds, well, maybe not hundreds, but at least a hundred people around the bank, right? Mm-hmm. And, then you, and then you look up and see this huge Zeppelin Tower, and I'm like, mm-hmm. holy crap. Like, this is the first time I've ever experienced like this in a game ever. Yeah. So, again, that's just the way the music really impacts the visuals. And the visuals work with the music very well. And I think that that's something that's what Classic WoW does very well. And it's atmospheric. Mm. We'll talk about that later. But yeah. one more question of personal life stuff for you, because I sure. think it's really interesting. And it kind of fits into the whole narrative we're talking about here is that you're a, a train operatic singer, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I, okay. yeah, I guess so. Yeah, and and your academic pursuit, like your th- you had to write an th- undergraduate thesis, I think, and your and your undergraduate thesis was on game music. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. It's, it's a little bit technical to get into now, but basically, yeah. how video game musicology is done, it sort of takes some stuff from film musicology, um, and I basically I tore that apart. That like, no, you can't you can't use this. You're doing it wrong. Everyone's wrong. Uh, games are very different in a film. So yeah, I basically told the entire music establishment, now nah, guys, get, fix your shit. It's broken. Yeah, actually, that's important <laughs> um, because it, 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 I think you're that right. Is, it's yeah. very true. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, because basically they yeah. came to it, like they didn't have any tools to understand the medium and they didn't like grow up with it. They don't really get it properly as much as someone who's like, the, there's a new generation of guys that do understand it better. So yeah, 
uh, that's a topic for another day. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. It's just, it's an interesting point because it's, I think it, uh, game music doesn't get the attention it deserves because as we know, no. with many games, not just World of Warcraft, the music is mm. just incredible. Yeah, so Final Fantasy. Yeah. Oh Zelda. yeah. Zelda, Zelda. Yeah. I mean, Zelda. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even like these first person shooters, uh, you know, a lot of them have great, like Halo. Halo had great yeah, music. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel like some of the music it definitely is appreciated um, in our kind of, you know, circle and the gaming mm -hmm. circle. And, but I do feel like it is under, um, uh, Underestimate, underrated, in, yeah, especially in a game like Skyrim, game. because like look at Skyrim's yeah, yeah. score. Oh my god, that's beautiful. Jeremy Sewell, yeah. I think his name is. I mean, that's uh, yeah, that guy's and it master. just adds so much to the immersion. You mm -hmm. know, uh, when you're you know saying Skyrim and riding across the plains and you hear the music, or if you're in um, you know Tearsful Glades and you have the creepy music in the background with with the fact that you're you know an undead and you just woke up from the dead, and you know it's just. I, and and WoW did it so well, where you're not only interacting with the world, but you're interacting with other players as well. Mm. And you know that you know these other players are having similar experiences, and you know it, it kind of make. You ever listen to a song on the radio, and and for some reason when it's on the radio, it sounds better than it was in your head because I I've had this experience before. I don't know if anyone else has because I know other people are hearing it as well. Mm. You're like, oh, this song is on. Other people are okay, hearing it too, yeah. so it's. It's kind of it gets me pumped up more, and when I hear the music of Wow, and I know that other people, are, okay, you know, like we're all walking in, say, to Stormwind together, and the music goes off, and it's like you're sharing this feeling with others, yeah. and they're all having this kind of like awe-inspiring moment, especially when you first start playing. It's really you really get that social aspect of, of mm -hmm. it as well that you don't get in other games like Zelda or Skyrim because you know that these people are experiencing this, this emotional response from the music going off and walking into the zone. And it's like sharing that experience with other people. The fact that it's in an MMO is so amazing. And it's something that I think WoW does so well with how, especially the music in classic was very, it, it wasn't, and we talked about this a little bit in our episode, it wasn't as, um, you know, in your face, sparky and it was kind of, yeah. yeah. And it was a little bit more, um, just kind of uh, subtle and, and mm -hmm. kind of just as much a part of everything as everything else was. Yeah. It comes out of the background when it needs to. Right. Like, like when you say, when you walk into Orgrimmar and then suddenly the appropriate instruments for that place, you know, the, the drums and then the orcs going, Whoa, you know, whatever they yeah. say, yeah. <laughs> uh, that, that's all that, that springs out of the background. You're like, wow. And then it sort of goes back again and you concentrate on, on the game yeah. again. Uh, but I was just thinking, like, you know, the community aspect of it. How amazing would it be to be in BlizzCon, a massive live orchestra playing this music, uh, being in a, that crowd there? I mean, I'd love to be in the choir for, like, the Call to Arms music in the beginning. Oh, know. yeah. Like, top 10 experience, lifetime, you know? Uh, and, and, the, and the faction uh, pride that you get, too, from, yeah. you know, when you walk into uh, the Horde and you hear the Horde music or, you know, it, or the for the Alliance, you hear, you know, Alliance-type music, and you really get mm -hmm. that pride of this is – my you know team or yeah i wish i had cool. that you see i've never i i've i've done both sides so much because i was such an alcoholic i've yeah. sort of like done an expansion like going back back and forth between the two so i don't know which i'd be like i'm really conflicted on classic i still don't know what i'm gonna play <laughs> well you, you, you can get it from both i, I yeah, honestly yeah, believe you can is, yeah. because i i do when i play alliance and i hear the music in iron forge or in stormwind it gets me just as pumped sometimes as hearing mm. the music in orgamar so what, what tracks had the most impact on you, Chimley, and why, would you say? Mm, that's a good question. Uh, I'd say the title screen music, um, mm. for because you don't hear that anywhere else. Um, and so for, I think for people coming back to um, retail classic after playing, you know, not doing any private server stuff, when they come back there, that's going to smack them across the face with nostalgia. Because yeah. yeah. like we talked about in the previous video about, about the music, it's in a seven beats, so it's quite mm -hmm. it's quite strange. Your, your brain's not used to hearing that time signature, so it's automatically quite gripping from that. And then, you know, there's so much nostalgia when people sit in that character creation screen for I don't know five hours trying to find the right name. <laughs> it's like, oh, do I want this haircut or that haircut? You know how it is. Yeah, uh, I can't be the only person that like I made a dwarf recently on a server that shall not be named, and because I, I had a beard basically, and I got to the Guildmaster guy, I was making a guild, and 
figured that my my beard actually covered too much of my tabard so i was like oh <laughs> damn i can't flex on my tabard now so i had to make a new character you know with the plaques that go either side so you can yeah. just see yeah. a little bit yeah yeah, yeah. this yeah. is this is the classic problem they can't have no. a barbershop because no barbershop yep. five hours of character creation <laughs> that's the thing too because you feel so much more um you know like this is a character i'm going to have in this game and, you know, you feel so much more connected to it in a way. When you can just go and change aspects, oh, I'm going to make my character a female now. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. like, no, like you have to, you have to know that when you, when you create this character, that's it. He's mm -hmm. your character and that's what it's going to look like. The only thing that's going to change is the gear. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the way he looks is going to stay the same. And, and yeah, it might not be realistic in a way, but it does give you that sense of, um, you know, making every little choice and how important every little choice is. You know, I think it is realistic because like you can't change your name either. And basically it's a mirror of like just being in real life. So if you're an asshole to somebody at work, you know, you can't just change your character's name and yeah, they yeah. look like a haircut. To, and then it's like, oh, hey, I've never seen you before. You must be a nice person. No, <laughs> I remember you from that dungeon run where you stole my loot. You know, yeah. Accountability yeah. is really important. Yeah. I was going to say, that's might, true. It's accountability, it but it's not right. only accountability, but it's also being happy with who you are, I think. Learning yes. that yeah, the game, yeah. you know? And, um, and becoming like a character in the game and feeling like, no, no, this is who I am, and I can gain respect and pride. And uh, Asmongold's talked about this a few times, about, you know, us gamers, we're often kind of a bit socially awkward as kids. Mm -hmm. or it's, it's not uncommon. It's a little bit. Um, yeah, yeah. We've all been there. Um, <laughs> and so being this other character, you know, no matter how dorky or spotty or you know gangly you are as a teenager when we were playing this game having this character that was like okay this is who i am in azeroth and people can accept me for that there's there's a sort of a level playing field and it's just you know meritocracy of okay i'm gonna i'm gonna push myself i'm gonna be the best at this or that and i'm gonna be a nice player and you get it's a nice experience for people who maybe in in their real life don't feel like they have a, a fair shake of the stick you know yeah. and, uh, and wow it sort of helps build up their self-esteem yeah, and I really think that classic is in a, uh, is unique in how you can do that more so than I think in any other uh, any other expansion in the game. I, and you really, you know, who you are in classic WoW is everything. Like, yeah, there's no bar where you where like in other games they have a bar where you know, oh, you're evil or you're good, and like, yeah. no, your actions and your deeds decide on who you are from that server. Yeah. You know, if you go ahead and you're known as the guy who helps people doing quests, the mm -hmm. guy who, oh, maybe occasionally gives gold to the new player, the guy who, you know, never once ninja looted, who um, was giving away free enchants and not asking for money back. Like, that, that is who you are in that game, and people come to respect you. And I've yeah. seen it happen on in vanilla, on private servers. There are certain people that the whole server, they know this person, yeah. either for good or for bad. Mm-hmm. And, I, and no other point of wow, I think, you know, and maybe a little bit in BC you had it in, in Wrath, but in Vanilla, it was so, so strong. The sense of the character you created, it wasn't, just didn't have to do with the gear that you had or what you did in game, but the experiences you had with each person really yeah. created who you were in that game. And, you know, if you didn't feel good about who you were in real life or whatever, you could make your character to be the most, uh, you know, uh, courageous and, and, and moral and, you know, and, um, basically this, uh, you know, image of honor and all this. and Or you could be a complete asshole and screw people over at every turn. Yeah. And, you know, and that is something that in Vanilla was so, so important and, and why I am really looking forward to, you know, um, classic because I, you know, from what we, from what we know, we're going to be getting, you know, uh, single servers that aren't going to be merged and things like that. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be really important for people to realize that, wow, my actions have weight to them. You know, there are consequences yeah. for my yeah, actions. Yeah, exactly. So let's transition a little bit to WoW as an art form. I think there's something that we want to talk about. And I think that we talked about the music part of it, but again, art is also visual. So mm. what about, you know, I think we've covered this in other Duff Talks as well in, 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 regarding the graphics and regarding visuals. So what is so important about the art form of WoW. Why is it important in this day and age? Why is it important to emulate it and bring it back? Well, I guess you can talk about the visual art form of it, but maybe the art of the actual gameplay, the art of the game design, I think is also is important to talk about because when people are talking about changes versus no changes, and 
it sort of goes back to the previous point as well. Basically, I'm looking forward to how inconvenient and annoying and broken the vanilla is because through those inconveniences, that is why you run together all the way from Elwyn to the Scarlet Monastery, Absolutely. you know, and you get a whole book worth of stories to tell. You get some friends for the whole game, maybe even real life friends one day, all of that. Like, you don't ever have the ability to do that in the later versions of the game because they make it more pleasant. They make it easier and less annoying to play. And through doing that, they rob us of the opportunity to help each other. And that's really what people love doing. So I think that is an aspect of the gameplay that, you know, that no changes crowd really understand and needs to be preserved so that, you know, in 50 years time, 100 years time, people can look back on the development of gaming because obviously this is going to go somewhere crazy. You know, VR, MMOs are going to come one day. I just hopefully I'm alive to see it because I've been waiting for a long time and it still hasn't happened. But, you know, <laughs> in, in 100 years, I want to be able to go to a museum or my grandchildren, whatever. And you say, okay, there's an Atari, whatever the hell. And, and there's a Dreamcast and an Nintendo 64. Oh, and here's a working version, like a, a private server of, of Vanilla WoW. And you can have like the little plaque on the side that explains why this is important. And, you know, just from the terms of the art history of it, like the, the muse museum piece part of it. But then also, I think developers, they've lost their way. And, you know, there's been a lot of controversies this last few months in terms of the gaming world about the developers just seemingly, and not just talking about Blizzard, just in many games companies, you know, Bethesda looking at you with that Fallout problem. Um, there's many companies that seem to have forgotten why the titles that made them famous made them famous. Mm -hmm. You know, they've forgotten why their games were good and the, the design principles have become lost over time and diluted and... Why do you think that is, Jimmy? Why do you think they, why do you think they forgot? Uh, you see, I don't, I'm not like an anti-capitalist person at all. I, I, you can definitely say that there's like, oh, money's gotten into it and like the whole Activision side of Blizzard, all that stuff. And then Bethesda got too big and they started just caring about putting Skyrim on your toaster instead of making another good game. All of this stuff. I, yeah, that's totally true. But this is a hard question to answer. Really, I, I think they've made, I think it actually goes back to what I just said before. They're trying to make it easier. It's mm -hmm. if, if you're on a set, you know, for, for a TV show, or, or, a, or like a, a theater play. If you've got your director, okay, the director's saying what's going on this, on the stage. And you might have an assistant director say, oh, oh boss, you know, look at me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something that's useful too. And often that's great. But then what if you've got like the sound guy who says, actually, I think we should do this. And then the cook in the back says, oh, no, we need to do this. And everyone's got their own little idea that they think, oh, this will make me look good. Let's add this. And so everyone's trying to improve and, and iterate on the concept. It's like, actually, no, no vanilla was great. Leave it. Yeah, like, trying to make it accessible to everyone. But yeah, yeah. Just by doing that, you take away so much of it. it. Yeah. yeah. They're like yeah. changing and changing and changing. It's like, no, no, you stop. You don't need to. What you had before, that principle you had there was good. Stay with yep. that. And yep. basically, this is going to be hopefully a renaissance in game design where look at how well old school RuneScape's doing. Look yeah. at how well Classic WoW will I do. Totally think of that, you know, why are so many uh, game companies redoing old games? And, you know, there's a reason. And, yeah. but, but at the same time they're doing that, more and more developers are losing touch of the community. And they're losing touch of, okay, why do these people like these games? Yeah, so I'm, I'm a huge yeah. movie guy, and I love movies a lot. Mm -hmm. And I, I've noticed a similar trend in the last 10 years with movies. Um, I'm not, I know there's a lot of Marvel fans out there. But I just want to say for now, it's <laughs> this, I, neither am I, it's the same exact <laughs> yeah. movie over and over mm. and over mm. again. Why? Because it, they make billions of dollars off of it. And they yeah. know that they, they, if they, if they put, mm. it's a recipe, if they put a certain uh, hero on the screen, people are going to go see it because they want to mm. see this thing. But I, I'll tell you exactly how the movie's going to go. The guy's going to, you know, fall from grace. He's going to say, oh, I don't know if I can do this. I need help. And then he's going to get help. Mm. And then he's going to do it. He's going to save the day. It's the same mm. friggin' story. So that, every that classic, game, every... um, the classic, yeah, the classic mythology uh, story of. Exactly. You know, which is uh, fine. But it's been Campbell's done. Like, yeah. 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 You know, and and no, nothing, no hate to people who love. I mean, I used, to, I have, I have hundreds of comic books, and a lot of the comic it's fans not, are, are are feel in a way, yeah. you know, heartbroken because of how. Yeah. It's 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 in a sense you've gotten that um, homogenization of like everything, mm -hmm. you know, and everything has the same recipe, so to speak, and follow this recipe for success, and you will get money. Yeah, but in the long term, you're leaving the people that are passionate about it. You're leaving their hearts out to, to get stomped. And it's happening and in like, music too. And, uh, sorry, so oh, let me yeah. 
yeah. popular music is what I should say. It's not happening in things like underground metal and th there's a lot of stuff that's happening uh, in the music scene that is original, but we're not seeing it. You know, develop mm -hmm. producers and developers want want <laughs> to know that it's going to be a success, and you they want a safe bet. Yeah, and I just saw that Bohemian Rhapsody uh, about Queen, and in that movie they go to the album that the Bohemian that the song Bohemian Rhapsody is on. They go to the producer and say, "This is a song we created," and the guy's like, "This is like eight minutes long. This is like or whatever mm -hmm. it was, five minutes long." And he's like, "Well," and the guy was so scared to like produce because of its length and because of the mm -hmm. operatic yeah. sections in it and stuff like that, and yeah. then. Of course, it's a huge hit. Everyone knows Bohemian Rhapsody, you know, but you, people need to have some, we got to take risks. Exactly. The, and and that's people the... are, are nowadays all looking for the safe bet and not to take that risk because to take that risk, you could, you could lose. Yeah, you can mm -hmm. lose, but you can also have something new and beautiful. And I think with, with the development team on WoW nowadays, even when we look at things like sharding, you know that they put into uh, re, uh, um, classic and the uh, the loot th uh, the loot uh, example, loot how they did it. Yeah, I think that's something that they said. Oh, you know, and this is where I started to get worried a little bit because they say, oh, we can implement these two things. The um, the classic community won't get too uh, upset about it, but a lot of people did. And you know, the if the issue with sharding is, of course, that wasn't in vanilla. It, it is a way for them to deal with overpopulation in the beginning, but another way to deal with overpopulation in the beginning is to make sure that all the um, the servers are at a minimum 2.53k cap. That way, yes, you will have some, some craziness in the beginning, but it also gives people um, say, okay, listen, I'm going to go onto this server where Asmongold's going. Yeah, it's going to be crazy, but the pearl I get is they get to play with Asmongold. Now, for me, someone who doesn't care about going on the play with Asmongold, I want to play on my own experience. Mm. A pro I get by, by playing on a, on a population, a mid-population server is it won't be that crazy in the, in the beginning. And the game should be as it is, as it was in vanilla. You know, things take a, a little bit to respawn. That's how it is. Mm -hmm. But when you start implementing things like sharding, you take away the player's experience because you're taking away my immersion with also things like loot changing it's 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 you know blizzard trying to put their hand in and say okay we can fix this well it's something that doesn't need to be fixed because the community can fix it itself and the community yeah. has to have that power and i think blizzard forgot about that they forgot that the community can handle things themselves and the community needs to handle Plus, things it's, themselves. it was up a huge can of worms too with uh, people uh, needing on stuff and everything like that exactly sharing with exactly and, and 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 was that an oversight probably you know it's it's not you know there isn't a fix to everything there isn't you know oh yeah some quality of life changes that were bound to happen things like the ui okay you know like i like raid frames are going to be a part of it the current raid frames that's one of the things like you know i'm not that happy about it but i would i would accept that way over having sharding and the loot change inside well and i think it's that disconnect that a lot of these developers have where they say that we can't, they're almost saying in a way that we can't trust the player base. So we have to uh, put our hand in it and meddle. Yeah. In. I think they've really lost touch with the actual player experience because I'm actually going to advocate for something probably potentially controversial. So I think what Blizzard's is going to do is they're going to have sharding when they release a service because they want everyone to have a smooth experience, you know, no bumps, no, nothing that will con convince someone. Oh, maybe I don't like this. No, they're just going to nerf the world. They're going to remove all potential, you know, frustrations, which is the mindset that got WoW to where it is now, mm -hmm. basically, because those frustrations are good for many different reasons. So for the, for the launch experience where you can't sign in or, you know, like a thousand person queue and you get in, you got like two frames to set per second to rub together and you've got no chance of getting any mobs or anything like that. But you see the world is just heaving and the server is dying. It's on fire. That's good. Yeah. That's actually a good thing because you just feel like you're part of something. You know, you said yeah. about Stormwind and the music, like it's a shared experience. Mm -hmm. You're part of something bigger than yourself. And I think that's what an MMO is really about at the end of the day it's not about a, a smooth gameplay experience if you want to go play some nice single player game go play skyrim go play yeah. witcher you know any of these are better games for that while it's not a very good single player you know yeah. <laughs> experience it's bad uh so the actual the good things that we want to get out of it the, the feeling of being part of something greater than ourselves they're going to remove that because they don't understand why people don't like these games hopefully they'll learn this through 
through seeing how Classic WoW pans out. And I can't be the only person that saved screenshots. You know, it, those of us that have played on naughty servers, you know, you, you go on a fresh server start and you're in the Night Elf spawn area and there's like this, this item inside a hut, like a little Night Elf house. There's been people, you know, queuing, 20 people deep queue and talking to each other, getting to know each other, you know, shouting at line pushes and all of that, waiting for that item to respawn. And I've got screenshots that I thought, wow, only only in WoW Classic could you see mm-hmm. something like this, like yep. a, a community event effectively just popping up. And and also the the the, the keep in Durata, you know, the one with the key and like the chest on the top. Oh, of the yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah. tier yeah. where the uh, Kulturas yeah. pirates or, or yep. sailors are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I want to see a queue there. I want to see yeah, people queuing absolutely. up. Absolutely. Yeah, because then you realize and, that, oh, we're part of a team here. We're like Team Classic. You know? And think about this for the new players who've never played uh, Classic before. They're getting like this mixed message, right? Because at yeah. one point, yeah, it's a game that's, you know, um, you know, less quality of life changes. But then you see where, you know, things, oh, and, and I feel bad for a lot of these players who never played it before because they're going to think, was this how it was? Was it always mm-hmm. like this? You know, and they're getting this mixed message of, yeah, you know, we want you guys to work together, but oh, here we're going to make sure that you guys all have this, or here we're going to make sure that you guys all have this. And my worry is a lot of these players, and it's not their fault because it's it's almost like trying to fault the child when it's the parent who's doing it. Because these people are getting now they're going to be getting used to these small quality of life things that are helping them, yeah, like yeah. like the sharding. So when it, things happen in the future, like say. On Courage or um, other things start happening in the future, they're going to look to Blizzard and say, hey, fix this. Mm-hmm. This is unplayable. I can't play it like this when really it's the true classic experience. And that mm-hmm. is where my worry starts to come in because – and you can't fault the players for that because they don't know the difference. Yeah, you just, they don't hit, know if this yeah, is... you just hit upon something really important. So it's like, it's like a spoiled child, right? It's hard yeah. to break that um, mindset. And it's also hard – it's also hard to really – correct them because they've been raised in that environment exactly. and it goes the other way too in bad environments when children are in mm-hmm. bad environments it's hard to break that as well so it, mm-hmm. it and i guess we're the ones risen in, we were raised in bad environments so we, we we not bad but less than optimal is, is what i should say mm-hmm. character and, forming yeah ca- character for, there you go thank you very yeah. we, we were raised in a character forming environment that we were used to these things working together working hard for what you want mm-hmm. and you know we can't start that seed of um, seed of corruption, if you will, but it's yeah. seed of uh, um, spoiling. Or yeah, because like they're going to look to yeah. Blizzard when we're going to look to each other. And it, that's where it needs right. to come. We need to look right. to each other and not to Blizzard. But when Blizzard starts implementing things like sharding, like the loot change, it starts that the process of people looking to Blizzard because mm-hmm. they're putting in something that wasn't there. So then you start to have, and this is where my work comes because I've been saying this for a while now. I think that, that that Classic WoW has the potential and it probably will, with how BFA is doing right now, to become the premier number one version of WoW. And that is a good thing and also a bad thing because that means there are going to be a lot of new players who don't know what to expect. It also means that Blizzard may feel obligated to do things like this. to do Because they say, you know, it's only going to be this and that, but we don't know what's going to happen down the line. And when we start issuing little changes like sharding and like these loot changes and like other things where... Blizzard is basically putting their hand in it and, and muddying the waters. People are going to get used to saying, oh, well, Blizzard is going to fix this. Blizzard is going to make it so that I don't have to deal with this. Blizzard is going to make it so I don't have to deal with this. Mm-hmm. When really we should be working together with the community to make sure that things run smoothly and how they would in the, in, in the actual vanilla timeline. And that's this why is it's what so really important. worries me. It's so important yeah. to community members like us and not just people that have YouTube channels. Like anyone can make a YouTube channel, but you know, all of us together need to say, Oi, Blizzard, right? Uh, you, you, I get it. You're trying to do a good thing for everyone. You're wrong. Yeah. Okay, here's why you're wrong from a player's perspective. And it, I was just thinking, going back to what you were saying there, just something <clears throat> given has no value. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're given a thousand pounds or dollars, it's like, oh, great. But you don't understand what it means. You didn't you learn nothing. yourself. Yeah. yeah. And people, <clears throat> so I'm a complete noob when it comes to WoW. I've barely raided anything, mostly because I just never had time. And I've been a hardcore casual my entire way through WoW and enjoyed all of it. But you hear the likes of, you know, elite sort of players, there's many of them to name, but, you know, Asmongold, for example, who complain, oh, preach gaming even, I've heard him talk about this, you know, complaining about welfare epics, you know, coming in a BC and then Wrath of the Lich King and then later on, yeah. where... They just give away a free piece of purple or whatever. And okay, coming from him, who's a super hardcore guy, you know, raiding Sunwell or whatever he was doing, 
that sounds like he's being a, a bit of a jerk saying, hey, you know, I've earned this. I'm really much better than you. You don't deserve this because you're just a lowly peasant. Well, OK, that's one way of looking at it. But from my perspective, as someone who is lucky if he gets a blue item, you know, mm. <laughs> if I get a purple in classic, it'll make my month. Uh, yep. So be- from my perspective, it's not like, oh, I'm an elitist and don't want people to be given free loot. It's because if they're given that loot, it's just going to completely trivialize everything in the game. It just, just like, removes yeah. all that. Just like nowadays with Titan Forging, you know, somebody yeah. in LFR gets the same item level as someone who in, in Mythic. Like, for what? For doing nothing, putting no work in? When I put this much time investment into the game, when I put 10 times more time investment than someone else, I should be getting 10 times the loot, 10 times the, the yeah. stronger things, you know, and, and that really comes to. And it doesn't mean that someone who's playing casual can have a, a similar experience. Like, I know plenty of people who have an amazing experience just leveling characters, and that's what they love to do, and they get that rush out of it. And guess what? More power to you, man. Like, you were you were and and vanilla. That is a side of the game that you can explore more so than any other time in WoW, because Absolutely. the leveling experience in vanilla was almost just as big as the rating was because it, was. it took a it's long time to level, yeah. Yeah. and it was such an amazing experience. There's so many amazing quests. There's so many amazing things you can do while leveling, grouping up with people, and there really are when you look at it. There's two totally different games inside WoW. One is the leveling process, and one is end game. And mm-hmm. nowadays it's rush, hurry up, get get through the uh, 110 to 120 so you can do the end game stuff. Yeah. There was no other time in WoW where you enjoyed the leveling process so much as you do in Classic. And that is something that cannot be taken away. It cannot be altered. It yeah. should not be altered. And it has to remain as it was. And people need to work together to make sure that it does. And Blizzard needs to get their hands the hell out of it so mm-hmm. they don't muddy the water and so they don't set a precedent where people expect Blizzard to get involved in things like this. And I wonder how, I, don't, I wonder what it is about the vanilla leveling experience, and, and to a degree BC, and maybe to a degree Wrath as well, that, that has that element of, you know what? So for my example, I never got to level cap until Wrath of the Lich King, and I was playing all the time from the very beginning or maybe just very end of, of, of vanilla, very beginning of BC. And it just never even seemed possible for me to get to the level cap, you know? I, I was a, a young kid, and it was something that, the cooler older brothers of my friends did. And I thought, wow, oh, it's just, it takes so long. I'll never do it. Mm-hmm. So it made the world feel a lot bigger because yeah. there, were, there oh, yeah. are areas I never saw. And, you know, mm-hmm. people, oh, yeah, I saw on the Who tab. Oh, wow, he's in Burning Steps. Oh, my God, that's crazy. That's so scary. You know, all of that. And I love that feel. I love that, though. That's so cool. Like, yeah. 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 So the world definitely felt dangerous. I mean, we talk about mm-hmm. that. But it, you don't you didn't sacrifice anything in the leveling experience it's not like okay well this is all you know boring content it's not the real game yet the game hasn't started until you get to 60 no no, no. no. when you got to 60 it's like oh i can do a raid now i guess yeah like, that's the only real thing i can think of that's missing really um and raids i actually have never done a 40 man raid a proper one so mm-hmm. i guess that'll be really thrilling but yeah in in vanilla even in a five man dungeon it's still you got all of that team building and camaraderie oh, yeah. like you have to be on the game. Like you, you need to oh, be yeah. on the ball and relying on each other, not just mm-hmm. face rolling and AOEing in a in a dungeon, which is yeah. maybe what yeah. happens nowadays. Yeah. So I have a very good friend of mine who's a, a, a vanilla veteran, and I told him he was over recently. And uh, Matt, you were actually here. It was just Jake, mm-hmm. and um, yeah. we were talking about vanilla WoW, and he always says that we always said vanilla is coming back, and he's like. Huh. He's like, I remember those days. Who the hell wants to go back to that? <laughs> and he's like, let me tell you something. Life's hard enough the way it is. Why would you want a game that's harder than life? And I'm like, <laughs> you know, that that point is not a bad point. It's a very valid argument, and it's logical. But So I have to say, I have to ask everyone here, are we masochists? Why do we want to play a game that we know is in a dangerous world, is hard to succeed? Are we missing, is it something that men, uh, not just men, men and women are missing in life that we want to, you know, and I've always thought this theory, you know, they always say men have a death drive, and this is going to be more towards men because, let's face it, the majority of, of Warcraft players are men, especially Vanilla Well. Mm-hmm. Is it something that we're missing, you know, there's no really wars right now, there's no hunter-gatherer society. Are we trying to mm-hmm. fill that gap with a game like WoW? Or video games I think in that's general. A really good point. Yeah, because there's a book called Tribe. I think I forget who wrote it. I've been meaning to read it, but they talk. The, the guy talks about soldiers, you know, going to Afghanistan or whatever. They come home and they miss it. 
they miss being in the war zone mm-hmm. because they miss their the fraternity, you know, the brotherhood yeah. and the, the feeling of connection with other other men. You know, I, I, this is not just for guys, but definitely guys are, you know, our, our forebears were fighters. They were warriors. They bled and died and, you know, defended their tribe, all of that stuff for millennia, you know, with no end. That there is no end to that just that that's what happened and so yeah i think there's an element of that we need the conflict we need the brotherhood we need to feel like we're defeating an enemy and we need the rewards as well yeah yeah the, the hero's journey that archetype is a is an archetype in storytelling massively as well nowadays mm-hmm. because that's what we used to have to do like the, in yeah. back in the old days that, that we missed that definitely and also i think it kind of goes back to a point that jordan peterson made and bringing up jordan peterson can open a big can of worms we don't need to get into <laughs> but i think one of the things that i really really did benefit from hearing him say uh, it goes it's a bit of a christian thing and that you know you carry your cross up the hill everyone needs that weight to bear because think about it if if you're on holiday every day of the year it's not fun after a while you, you need some some yeah. burden well, we yeah, are beasts yeah. of burden in a way we need to feel like we're doing something difficult and thus it's meaningful when we get whatever the reward yes, is because absolutely. we understand why that reward was was worth the, the work yeah you know? when i when i didn't work for a while and i had days off it nothing but then when i started working and you have one or two days off it feels so much more rewarding and i think that goes into it with wow it's like you know when i put myself into this game and i go through the trials the tribulations the um, you know, getting from one to 60 and, you know, even though that experience to me is fun and rewarding in its own, when you get to that point and that goal that you had laid out for yourself, it's so much, it's like you get to that reward and then even still there's more and more. And I feel like for me, that is a big part of the drive is the rewards that I get from it, from number one, the immersion, from the leveling process, from the escape the, and I think a, a big one for me is the escape, the fantasy escape, the need to, you know, this craziness and this world that we live in today, it's fucking nuts. We live in the fucking insane world mm. where people on one side and the other are just trying to kill each other. Yeah. And people nowadays, God forbid you have a disagreement or an argument, it's like, you know, it's almost like you threaten to kill somebody when that's not mm. the truth. It's okay to have disagreement. It's okay that one person doesn't see uh, the same as the other doesn't mean we have to hate each other. So mm-hmm. there's so much for me to just escape from and just say, the world's crazy. Let me go to a place that it's much simpler where I can have camaraderie with friends, where I can have um, this, this journey and this exploration that I have been doing for the last 14 years, but for some reason has never gotten old. And every, every time I can explore something new, do something different and still get rewarded every time yeah i think wow does a really interesting thing and that we're tribal animals right we that's a natural instinct okay so in the uk during the world uh, war you know world war ii you had something called the blitz spirit which Mm. is you know all all over the country we're getting bombarded by the luftwaffe is that the keep keep calm thing pretty much uh kind of yeah yeah, yeah. keep calm carry on that was like the stiff upper lip sort of you know we, we can do it britain come on but as well as that people were happier they were left there was much less depression people were stronger with each other because you know you got your house bombed down the stall all, all the streets around you were getting bombed and all of that and, and everyone banded together as a team it was you like felt... that after 9 11 here after 9 11 yeah, exactly like that. that's a really good point yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. that 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 spirit is something that's innate to humankind and we don't have that sort of conflict very often in our lives nowadays and so you know i'm in a big kind of uh, I think there's a load of flats here. I'm in one of them and I can look out. There's a whole bunch over there. I don't know any of their names, not a one, mm-hmm. but I know that if actually bombs started dropping on us right now, we'd probably all band together and like, we'd feel these bonds of connection and it would actually be something of a peak experience for us, mm-hmm. despite obviously the bombs and the death and whatever it might be like in terms of socializing, probably be the most meaningful social contact we'd ever had in our lives. Yep. And so I think that world of Warcraft, because it's like that horde versus Alliance dynamic, and like, okay, I'm I'm a I'm a dwarf hunter. I, I look around and see, oh, Maldron, paladin, human there. And yeah. um, Death Camp, you know, you well, I'm oh, sorry, Maldron's a shaman most of the time, but whatever. Um, so it, you see your your teammates in the alliance and you know instinctively, like you've got my back. Yeah. Something go down. That camaraderie, that brotherhood. Yeah. yeah. And nowadays you walk down the street, you don't know if people have got your back. Mm-hmm. And you don't know their names, you don't know anything about them, you don't know are, are we on the same team? I think that's something people really get out of wow, mm. it's feeling belonging part of a team point 
That is a really good point. And even more so when you get, when you find the guild, when you find, you know, inside, a, you know, you have first the faction, then the guild, and you have that camaraderie there where it almost becomes like a family in a lot yeah. of guilds that I've been in. And I've been in some amazing guilds where I have had met friends that, you know, I told things that I probably wouldn't even tell people in real life. And <laughs> it's, um, it's really interesting in how, those connections are made and how they are strengthened over a video game, you know, and it's, but, you know, as we say a lot, it's not just a video game to us. It's, it's, a, it's an experience. It's a, it's a, it's its own world. It really is. And um, for me, you know, and go back to that classic feel and how, you know, the community really steps together in, in order to make sure that things go the right way, you know, and going back to the thing about sharding, right. It's, it's like, when you have a group of people that, you know, say, okay, you know, the server is uh, capped out at 2.53K that agree, okay, we're going to play on this server because we want to play together. Say they're, you know, part of Adam Gold's crew or whatever. They're, they're, they're a crew. They're, they have their friend, the friends on Discord and all this. They ain't gonna, they're going to, in the back of their mind, they know that it's going to be kind of a, a crazy experience in the beginning while leveling because, you know, and this is how it should be without the charting that because they know that they're, you know, playing on a very high populated server, probably one of the most because it's one of the most no notable people in, in the WoW, uh, you know, world. So guess what? One of the cons is going to be that it's going to be really hard to uh, level in the beginning, but we'll work together. We'll band together. We'll make it together. Maybe we'll do some exploration XP. We'll do some other things. Maybe we'll do a raid while everyone else is leveling and we'll do whatever, whatever. That is what should be expected. But guess what? Someone who is going to be playing with their friends on a low population server, they're not going to have that same experience. They're going to have a smaller experience where it won't be as crazy in the beginning. You know, say we all play together on a smaller server that doesn't have some really notable person on there. It's going to be a little bit easier. And that's how the community figures these things out together. You know, it's like, yeah, we we accepted this. It's going to be a little crazy in the beginning, but we're going to have the payoff of playing together and, and being together. And we said, no, we don't want to. We don't want to have that craziness. We're going to do our own thing and go on a smaller server. And that is where we have the choice ourselves. Hmm. And this and is what actually Cargo was talking about. We did that. We did that other uh, podcast with Cargo right, and, and the Dunity. story of the server. Each yeah. server has its own story, unique story yeah. that could unfold yeah, yeah, if we yeah. don't have things like sharding, which kind of levels the playing field. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. just something, but there's something we should transition to because we're getting close to an hour is what is the future of Blizzard Entertainment or Blizzard Activision? Um, there's a lot of negative stuff that's been coming out about Diablo, yeah. uh, about Diablo Immortal, about uh, people yeah, in Blizzard are not happy, uh, mm -hmm. developers are leaving, uh, uh, there's, there's an attrition there's happening over. Yeah. So then, they, they what have you heard uh, recently about that? So I heard that there, uh, the way Blizzard worked is there was a, uh, a what's it called when you get a bonus, a, a bonus uh, initiative there where, you know, you did something, you, you did whatever you're supposed to do, and, and people would make double their salary because of this huge bonus they would get. Hmm. And this comes was, from, you know, real quick, this is, this is sourced from the original developer of Diablo. Who was talking yes, about yes, yes. So we can link to the video where I got all the have it. It's in the uh, it'll be in the description. So basically, a lot of the develop a lot of the developers would be you know um, kind of motivated to do what they were going to do because they know that they would have this bonus at the end. Of it. And mm -hmm. recently, that bonus uh, style of of pay has been completely taken away. So now these people who were getting paid say. You know, say just a number, hundred thousand dollars are going going down to like fifty thousand. And in the terms of where developers are in in payment in games, they are on the lowest of the low compared to other gaming companies, right? But with that bonus, they were making equal, if not more, because of what they were doing. So that has gone. And with that, we saw Mike Morheim leave. We saw um, uh, Jay on Brack take over, and we see now. A lot of other people leaving the company as well, and, and there, you know, it started with, of course, um, Chris Metzen, other people leaving because, you know, and this was all speculation on what David said, but he said that there has been a lot of negative things going on at Blizzard, and um, and because of that, I think we see the 
lack of connection with the community now. I really think that that has been a direct um, um, consequence. kind of consequence of this. You know, we, we, we had people getting paid good. You know, when you get paid good, you're motivated to good work, right? I mean, it's, 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 it's the truth. You know, when you're paid good and you get a decent wage, you're more motivated to do what you're going to do and to do it right and to make sure you're doing everything right. And also you get, you make sure you get quality developers as well. And a lot of those quality developers left because they, they can make double, triple what they're doing, but they love doing it with Blizzard. But it's pretty much like slapping in the face when you take away that, that amazing, you know, benefit that they were getting to get that bonus. And it really, really made them want to go the extra mile to do the work that they knew they could do because they knew that they would have that bonus that they did. Now there's nothing at the end of that struggle. So why, why do it? Why do it? Why go the extra mile? Yeah, I think awesome. they said that they were gonna they were gonna put the bonus packages into their pay, like a, the same amount, but probably it's not gonna be distributed exactly as it was no. before. So I All imagine right. a lot of people are gonna miss out. Um, yeah, and and also because it was, I think a lot of it was based on, um, you know, the work that they were doing, how much work they were doing. Mm -hmm. And to give an overall number, you know, like you said, some people lost almost half their pay yeah. because of how they did it. So it's <laughs> that that makes a a big big difference. And I well, think have, have you heard have you heard about the Blizzard staff that are living sort of in massive Blizzard ha staff houses together? Yeah. You know, because yeah. they can't afford to actually live in Austin. I think it's no Irvine or you know, Irvine, California. Yeah, California. Somewhere, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's like and the most expensive that, part. Yeah. I mean, people would go to work for Blizzard because they knew. Like uh, John Stats, when we had him on, he was like, the pay was a little bit less than what he was getting, but he wanted to work for a company like Blizzard, you know, that, that had this amazing name and had these amazing titles. And people went there because, yeah, it might be a little bit less pay, but it's their dream job to work for Blizzard. But now it's like not worth it to a lot of people. And yeah. it sounds more and more like Activision is becoming a bigger part of Blizzard. And it's almost like Activision, it almost seems like Activision is pulling the strings more than Blizzard is now. And it seems like, and that is where I also have a lot more fear for Classic because we see these things that are already went through with the sharding and the, and the loot changes. And if we see this trend continue, there could be more of that. That is definitely scary. Like I, I really hope they ring fence uh, Classic and, and Warcraft 4 and the eventual reboot of whatever Diablo 2 remake, if they make that, something like that. I hope if... I don't care what Activision does to the rest of the company. As long as they keep Classic the way it should be, that's important to me because it's not because I want to play the game. It's because I want my grandchildren to be able to play the game. Yeah. You know? It's it's really, it needs to be a long sighted view they take of this. Yeah. So, you know, it, it could be just poor planning on Activision's side too. We have to, we have to realize this is, a, this is a business, right? So we can't exactly know the profit loss that they've, they've had or why it occurred. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, this could be a very rational way of dealing with it. But well, at the same time, at the same time, uh, you have to consider that if you want to get yourself out of the red and into the black, which is, you know, red is, is negative profit, black is positive profit. So if you want to get out of the red into the black, you have to put some risk, like we talked about this earlier, yes, yes. risk in, in, in developing new titles and new intellectual yeah. property. But something that David was saying in the video is that Activision looked at Overwatch, which is one of Blizzard's biggest titles, and said, why isn't this game drawing as much money as, um, what's the big, Fortnite? Yeah. And they're like, well, it's not, it's not Fortnite. It's not that kind of game. It's different. And they were like, well, it should be, and it should be doing this. And that was a reason why they cut a lot of the pay is because they, they don't have – it's almost like – you know, say it was like our dad looking at two games of how come this one makes it? they don't understand. It's like someone who's so out of the picture trying mm -hmm. to make sense of something that they don't understand. You know, it's, and that that's what it seemed like to me. And, and then they make judgments based upon those those really. It's the problem of being a publicly traded company. They yeah. they have a you know a legal responsibility to maximize the profit. And so, you know, I, if I was able to make a gaming company. I'd never take it public, even if it would make my game bigger and I'd have more money to do stuff with it. You, you need to trust that your developers know what they're doing. And back then they did. And for, you know, the word renaissance, yeah, that literally means rebirth. Mm -hmm. And I think that we're going to see that happen in the, in the MMO genre at some point soon. 
because you have games like old school runescape you will have a game like classic wow and these more old school style mmo mechanics that actually are the reason that the mmo genre even became what it what it did yeah. you know the people wonder, oh, I wonder why MMOs are bad. You know, no one's playing MMOs anymore. The genre is sort of dying. No one's making good new ones. It's because people forgot how to make an MMO. You know, they they think, oh, well, you know, the classic style of game design, oh, that's just roast into glass. No, no, roast tinted glasses. No, that's where we came from. That's how yeah. this all happened. And so, yes, Activision might just end up killing Blizzard over time, or at least the Blizzard that we love. And all of the talent might move away. All of these things are terrible. But the, the principles that made Classic Wild what it was, they're eternal. And I think that the Classic Wild project and, you know, preserving on what we're doing now, we're talking about, okay, what actually are the principles that make a good game? Oh, it's a burden. You need to, you need to feel like you're carrying a heavy thing up a hill with your friends helping you do it. That, that's basically the, a, a small microcosm of what we're talking about. And that can't be destroyed by any terrible business practice. And so you'll probably have eventually, hopefully, maybe a VR again, who knows, you'll get a, a ragtag bunch of, of hungry young developers who are talented, who think, all right, those are the principles that we're going to stick to and make a new version, you know, make have a new you, MMO. Have you looked into Pantheon? You see, that was in the back of my mind. I haven't because I don't want to get yeah. disappointed. I know Alex Central has been raving about it for ages. And, yeah, and it's this, not just him. Yeah. I mean, there are some really interesting and um it's a little bit different uh you know it it, it is based on kind of more of an everquest uh, type uh, a style where um, where there are uh, outdoor instances basically so there's right. no really uh, indoor instance but it but it's very similar in style of do you mean um, non-instance dungeons or instance not instance dungeons okay, yeah okay. so there's they're mostly mm-hmm. outside exploratory together but the camaraderie and the social aspect is very strong in the game and yeah. it is challenging in its way and there will be like no add-ons things like that and it is taking the good things from wow mixing it with the good things from other games and it's from a team that looks just very passionate and um it really looks promising um mm-hmm. you know we've seen this with mmos as well though that looks promising and they did not deliver um mm-hmm. you know another one is star citizen which people have been waiting for years and i myself love sci-fi aspect i want to go into ship travel planets and you know i think that would be amazing but when it comes down to it no other game so far has superseded classic wow for me and there's a reason for that there's a it's 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 because of the art it's because of the developers it's because Mm. of the it's because of the community it's because of all these things together that make classic wow and just removing one of those things can have a very, very big consequence. Just mm-hmm. like sharding, just like the loot changes. When you start to meddle in that, you don't understand the domino effect that it has. Because the effect is that the players have a change, right? That the way that the players see the game has a change. And then they start to look to Blizzard for help and for, you know, it, to, to come in to intervene for intervention. So that is where I think the cancer starts and, and how it grows. You know, I'm optimistic though, because if you think back to, so you were talking to John Stats and, you know, Mark Kern as well has talked about this as well, that they've talked about the development process of vanilla and everyone in the, that's been interviewing is asking these questions like, oh, sensei, how did you know that this would be perfect? You know, oh, great Oracle. How did you know that? And it's like, oh yeah, we kind of just made it up. Oh, yeah. it's just, yeah, yeah. you know, it's just, oh, it's just a chance. We just, it was a good group of guys and we knew what we were doing, I guess, but it was sort of by accident that it's so good. All of yeah. that. So you think of that period of MMO development as being this primordial stage. No one really knew what they were doing, but it worked and they didn't right. quite know why. But and, and then we've got the next period of of the fall of Rome, you know, the fall of WoW and and going into the whole making it easy for the people to play the game and, and thus destroying the reason to want to even play the game to, to begin with. And then where we are now is we're at the end of that period, I think. And we're at the beginning of a period of, of you know, renaissance. So what was the renaissance? It was people looking back in time mm-hmm. uh, to, the, to the Greeks and the, the Romans. Greeks and the Romans, yeah. yeah and, and like this old forgotten knowledge mm-hmm. and thinking, whoa, people knew a lot back then. What can we learn yep. from it's this? It's amazing that how much they knew back it's then. A, it is very yeah. true. And I just it's hope a, that um, people look to that and they don't try to add too much of today into the old. 
Yeah, I think it's an interesting parallel there because, you know, back mm-hmm. in Greek and Roman times, it was sort of similar. They didn't really, it was all for the first time. People were trying to figure stuff out and then yeah. it got rediscovered. I think we're there. I think we're in the renaissance of MMOs are just about to happen because with any luck, if Classic is as successful as it as it will be, as we're all sure that it's going to be. Um, in fact, I'm I'm really sort of, scary anticipation like it's 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 worrying it's a great way of looking at it though chim it really is i really like that and um, yeah this is gonna be a big thing going forward you know yeah but i do think that we have a very strong obligation to reach out to blizzard and to let them know that this is what we want and this is what we think should be because really when it comes down to it they have the recipe all they have to do is stick to it Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, and I think the main thing is like, yeah, is the sharding thing going to ruin the game? No. You know what I mean? Like as long as they don't go crazy with it. Um, I really think that if the community bands together, that is where the success will be. Mm -hmm. And the success lies within each other. It really does because we have the power to make this a win or a loss. Mm. Um, I and just the more, the more successful it is, the more likely this renaissance is to happen. Absolutely, absolutely, and hopefully with games like Pantheon, and you know, in the future we will see a rise and a. Because uh, you're absolutely right. I mean, and that's not just with gaming, but also with other things. Uh, with you know, we look at you know a lot of television shows have gotten better over the years, and mm. and you know we look to like the '80s and the. The 80s for movies were the golden age, I, I think, you know, 80s, early 90s. Um, even with music, you know, things, it's a lot of it right now is looking to the, looking at what was good and trying to recreate that. And mm-hmm. um, it's always a good thing, but it's always good to remember that we have to add our, our, you know, it's our frame of mind, which has changed. And as a lot of the times, Certain things have not changed over time, but our frame of mind is what changed. And it's it's so it's important to remember that, you know, if something doesn't remember the, exactly seen the way it was, maybe it's our frame of has changed and not the actual thing itself. Hmm. With WoW, I think a lot of people are expecting, you know, what they're expecting. They're expecting to play the game that they fell in love with, the game that a lot of people have played over time on private servers. They know what they want. Their frame of mind really has not changed. Um, I mean, it's changed to an extent. We've all changed to an extent, but we know the game that we want, the game that we fell in love with. And I think, you know, Blizzard, please. <laughs> I think Blizzard could yeah. uh, invest in old people's homes in about, you know, 40, 50 years. They could buy a, buy a whole chain of old people's homes and, and buy some nice computers, get a LAN party set up there. I wouldn't mind living out my old age in a Warcraft <laughs> LAN party. <you> know? <laughs> Amazing. That's actually a really good idea, and I think. Can I imagine if we could do it in VR, though. Like, I, I actually live it. Yeah. You know, no, don't in, don't in even, dude. I need to like have had a family already before it happens, because otherwise it's just off the cards. You should have no life yeah, in I'm, forever. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What was that yeah. movie where uh, people went into those shells and they basically like lived in those shells and they would come out? They'd be like these grotesque monsters because they haven't moved in like months. And oh, it's, it's essentially actually... what what's the movie that just came out? Um, Ready Player One, right? Well, oh, I need to say that more, it was a little bit different than that. Chimley, very good movie. It was really yeah. good. Very good. I, I did not think it was going to be as good as my brother and I saw it together. Apparently, and the were... book's even better. I haven't read it, but yeah. So yeah. Uh, we're going to close. But Chimley, one more question for you: mm-hmm. uh, what What is your prim- What primary thing about Classic WoW? What's the one thing you could pull out and say this is the thing that I, that I love the most, or this is what I is definitively Classic WoW to you? Buffing buffing why yeah okay because it sort of symbolizes everything for me so i can't play a rogue can't play a warrior just can't do it. i've tried just doesn't feel right because if i'm going through the wetlands i need to be able to cast prayer of fortitude or mark of the wild or something on that paladin going in the opposite direction and he stops you know gives me a wave buffs me with might that i don't need or whatever <laughs> it is you know and it, because that it, <sighs> It's just, you know, saying hello to your, your fellow traveler on the road. That that tiny, small, little insignificant thing that's totally unimportant. It's not really that part of you know the game and play experience. It's the little things like that that make you think, no, 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 this is actually not a game. This is a world that we're all going to to, to journey in together. 
And it, you know, the, the fact that they got rid of buffs in retail made me think, yeah, you guys just don't get it. You, you don't get it. It's not the world of Warcraft anymore. It's the game yep. of Warcraft over there. And so and I'd say buffs is, is like a cheeky sort of answer to that. That's a great point. Yeah. And I always make sure that I buff the, the passing traveler. And and yeah. I love the response, you know, the, the backs, even if it's just backslash TY or, or yeah. backslash bow or, or buff backslash back or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Or buff back. And, you know, you get the rogue who, who can't buff back and they're just wave to you. And, and that's, I love playing buff classes as well. It's, you know, and it's, it's offering that something else. Yeah, to the game. something I do miss as a shaman because you really can't buff. You can buff with your totems, but you can't buff a passing traveler because you're not in the same party as them. So you can't yeah. you can't actually buff them. And I'm like, oh man, I wish I can give them something, but I can't. Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, but that's a really good pick point. up calorie and give people shirts. That's what you do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we had here's, a guy on, a on, the, on the private server, and his name was Shirt. And what he did is he just gave everyone shirts, and then it became known that his shirts became a lot of money, right? So people would like pay crazy money for shirts, shirts. Wow. Because it was so so and so shirt made by shirt. And I think eventually the, they actually got kicked from the server because they thought he was like selling gold, but he got back. It was it was a misunderstanding. But um, yeah, just things like that, you know. And everyone knew this one guy on the server who was named Shirt who made shirts. Yeah. That, that's exactly what makes classic good. Like honestly, yep. I could care less, or I couldn't care less rather, if I if I see Cthulhu. You know, maybe it'd be cool, like getting Kalthazard. Yeah, that'd be awesome. But mm. yeah, I don't know if I can be bothered. You know, it's a lot of time. I'd much rather just you know farm herbs and then make potions and sell them to random people, or you know, go to a lobby and just give them like ten gold and watch them just explode. You know, stuff like that. It's for me, that. it's a social game rather than a action game. Or anything like that. that. Or competitive. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. All right, Matt, you want to give the outro? Actually, before we do well, that, I have some housekeeping. Yeah. To, sorry, let me, let me get let me through the housekeeping. Okay. So, Come on, it's sweet, baby. Our podcast people, I'm very sorry. If you guys only listen to us on podcasts, you, you probably noticed a lack of podcasts because I defended my thesis and life was crazy for a while. We're back to making Dev Talks. Um, Chimney's our first new Dev Talk. Um, so, we're going to be making, we're going to be uploading Dev Talks to SoundCloud and then that'll go to iTunes and everything else later. So, Sorry about that. Uh, second thing is, is if you also want to listen, if you're watching on YouTube, you, we're also available on podcast format. Mm-hmm. Uh, the third thing I want to talk about is Chimley. Okay, so Chimley's channel is on YouTube. It's called Chimley. Uh, if you look at, look up, the link will, to the channel will be in the description. The link to his Twitter will be in the description, and the link to his Discord will be in the description. Uh, check out those three things. Make sure to do that. Scorecraft. Twitch as well. And I'm going to say this: this is this is me talking. I'm not. This is not blowing smoke up anyone's ass. Scorecraft is the most original classic WoW content on the internet. There is nothing else more original. Hands than that. down. Yeah, guys. It's like, yeah, I, it's, yeah, yeah. I just have to say real quick: like, there is nothing right now that I have seen on all of YouTube that compares with the amount of just effort time the amount of just amazing amazing work that chimley has put into these videos you have to check them out if you're a music lover even if you are a music lover go and check them out guys they are outstanding outstanding work and i, w- I wouldn't just say that i i really believe in chimley's work and uh just yeah. amazing absolutely and, amazing yeah and finally um guys if you want to be on dev talk we don't care who you are what you do you don't have to be a Streamer or a gamer, you don't have to be whatever. If you if you just want to be on Def Talk, you email us. The email is right on in your screen, and it'll be in the description as well. So get okay, Def Camp, take it out, take it away. <laughs> All right, guys. So with nothing else to say, this is Def Camp. This is Meldron and Chimley. <laughs> Hi, this is Chimley signing off. Okay, signing guys. off. Peace. Have a guys. good one. See ya. <laughs>